The brightest light casts the darkest shadow. Every light has its shadow. Link, Dark Link, Zelda, Midna, Raru, Ganondorf, Impa, and Koga. But there is one light that casts the biggest shadow, the Great Deku Tree. It's always been a mysterious figure within the Legend of Zelda. A mysterious figure that carries wisdom that can only be described as omniscient. Why is it in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom that Ganondorf slumbers in what appears to be a cursed Deku Tree? A dark Deku tree, rotten to the core and at the epicenter of that rot or gloom is the bed of the Demon King. In spite of being so large and staring the player right in the face, the dark or shadow Deku tree is an easily missed detail in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, where the attention is drawn to the monsters in front of it and the big red eye catching door or the barrier to Ganondorf's inner sanctum, really our attention should be upward toward the glowing sad red eyes and twisted face. From the top down, it even looks like the cursed Deku tree is vomiting gloom. What is the Dark Deku Tree and what connections can be made to this mysterious husk of what once was? Well thinkers, grab a warm cup of thonk juice, get cozy and let's explore the root cause of a Zelda mystery. Trees, tree roots, light, darkness, gloom and hope. These are all themes explored above and below the surface of Hyrule. Between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, the Deku Tree is always guarded, the pedestal in which the Master Sword rests. A striking difference between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, however, is that the Great Deku Tree is unresponsive and stricken with gloom at the core of its being until freed by Link and the existence of Light Roots. Light roots created by Raru's sealing light, of which mostly point towards the Deku Tree, or rather, a Deku Tree that was created by Raru that created a vast network of sacred light roots below ground. Perhaps it was always the case that the Deku Tree could provide a sacred glow that recharges the Master Sword by channeling sacred light from its roots to the pedestal. Why do I bring this up though? Is it TOTK's direct reference to Ocarina of Time, where the Deku Tree was cursed by Ganondorf saved by Link only to wither and die and re-sprout anyway? Or maybe it's because of the fact Ganondorf used the demon or dark Deku Tree to rejuvenate his own body. I mean, just ask yourself, why did Ganondorf choose to sleep within the core of the Dark Deku Tree? Why does it exist? Did Ganondorf really create the Dark Deku Tree as Raru created a Light Deku Tree? Well, let's review. At the bottom of the depths, where lies darkness, demon, shadow, and flame, there lurks a cursed and gloom-stricken Deku Tree. And at the core of this sickening sight is a tremendous hunk of gloom infesting a stump that opens to reveal the slumbering great evil, the Demon King Ganondorf himself. This was not the Demon King ceiling ground, however, but it was close by. Not far above is the ceiling chambers in which Raru sealed Ganondorf Demise. away and expended most of his life force. Observably, we could see Raru's life force siphoning off elsewhere to create what we can only speculate as the Light Roots and their continual source of sacred power, the Great Deku Tree. Conversely, there are periodically very small but distinctive patches of gloom or Dark Roots. Perhaps it was the sacred energy of Raru that remained within the Light Root network of the Deku Tree in which Ganondorf fed off. But this raises a question in which I ponder. Could Ganondorf have used this Dark Deku Tree to empower his Gloom weapons, much in the same way that the Master Sword was empowered by the Light Roots that seals or repels the darkness? What's more, how could the Gloom have spread and taken over an entire Deku Tree and its smaller network of roots? Well, here's an interesting thought. We'll look at how the network was corrupted in a moment. I'd like to focus more on what happened instead. 
perhaps there was already two Deku trees, one above ground and one below ground, directly beneath Hyrule Castle and its ceiling chambers. Additionally, it's possible that Ganondorf had, over the course of a millennia, spread his gloom from the ceiling chambers and reached the underground Deku tree, a source of light for the depths, and upon reaching it, corrupted the ancient Deku tree, using it to siphon off sacred power from the overall network of the roots that are shared. Gloom seems to be a power that infects, withers away, or controls things. By extension to the Gloom, the Gibdu are a fascination, showing that Gloom spreads much like the rot and growth of mushrooms and mycelium spores. And as we know from a previous video, we know that trees' roots extend across a vast network of benign and mutually beneficial mycelium mushroom networks, but can at times become infected by parasitic and harmful types of mushrooms. Perhaps that's exactly how Ganondorf's gloom magic operates and how it is able to infect, drain, or weaken, and in other cases, completely overcome and control his victims. In the case of the ancient Deku tree below ground, it really could be argued strongly as one of the earliest victims of Gandalf's gloomy mushroom magic. But ever more revealing is when we clip through the walls of the infected dark Deku tree and observe the completely gloomified core where Ganondorf slumbers. The more we stare at this, the more it looks feels and screams of a parasitic mushroom infection controlling its host, draining and siphoning off its vital nutrients to feed the source of its fungal infection. And in this case, the source is Ganondorf. Speaking of which, it's probably the perfect time to mention, but if you want to see a video fully breaking down mushroom infections, mycelium gibdu zombie plagues, and, of course, the science behind it, there's a video linked in the top right corner already on the channel. Spooky stuff, go check it out uh, when you get the chance, of course. Now, having drawn a connection to mycelium spores, giant networks of mycelium connecting trees' roots across huge distances, this raises an amazing point about Raru, Ganondorf, light, darkness, and of course, Deku trees. If there was already multiple Deku trees, one above ground, and one below ground beneath Hyrule Castle, and the gloom of one infected tree traveled across this network, reaching the light roots of the great Deku tree and affected its health, then perhaps the battle of light and dark is a war waged across the Myocorhizal network, a network of mycelium working in tandem with or against plants or trees connected, and just like the real relationship between non-parasitic symbiosis and parasitic relationships, a relationship exists between light and dark. Maybe this relationship branches back before Raru and Ganondorf's time. Perhaps the root cause of this conflict isn't simply ancient, but primordial. In terms of the real world, the Mushroom Kingdom is older than most life that have walked the Earth. Perhaps the War of Light and Dark is as old as creation itself, dating back to the era of the Three Goddesses when Hyrule was created. Two trees, one in the dark and one in the light, always present, equal and opposite, check and balance. Light and dark as elements are neutral, but when that nature is perverted and harnessed for a particular goal, that balance is broken. Does that mean that both Raru and Ganondorf perverted the otherwise neutral and divine forces when tapping into the ancient Deku Tree and the Great Deku Tree? Well, not necessarily. When Raru sealed Ganondorf away, Raru gave up his life essence to create or empower the light roots of the Great Deku Tree whilst also keeping Ganondorf sealed away. This relationship was almost, if not entirely, mutually beneficial. To briefly summarize this relationship, it kept Ganondorf from breaking free, whilst also invigorating the Great Deku Tree with the power of light that seals the darkness below. By extension, this interplay tipped the balance between both Deku Trees. To check this balance, when Ganondorf's gloom reached the ancient Deku Tree and corrupted it, that balance was slowly leveraged to favor darkness and those that dwell below ground. Speaking of which, who is it that naturally dwells below ground? Demons like Bokos and Moblins? Well yes, of course, and Skyward Sword's lore indicates demons came from below ground per the lower levels of the ancient cisterns dungeons, uh, but more than that, in Tears of the Kingdom, we have post statues who guide post spirits to the afterlife. 
suppose spirits that naturally find their way to Hyrule's depths. Depths that, like the name suggests, are indeed below Hyrule and also serve as a juncture or place between the living realm and the afterlife. In one sense, the depths could even be seen as a place of great spiritual significance to the realms. One might even consider this place as sacred. Is this place Termina? A terminal for the souls of those who died to find rest and seek the afterlife. A place existing in parallel of the light world. Or low rule, as in low rule, a place below the world high above, high rule. Or perhaps the depths are a reinterpretation of the sacred realm, a dark and mysterious place spirits are anchored to in a layer of the physical plane within the planet of Hyrule. There are countless questions that arise from two Deku trees, light and dark, above and below, ancient and great. One final thought though that does come to mind is Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Both games contain the Maku trees, giant, sentient divine trees that speak with Link and are central to the plot and lore of the games. The Maku trees themselves are functionally and thematically the same as Deku trees and it may just be another alternate timeline thingy where there are different names for the same creatures, objects or characters but uh, it's very easy to connect the two. Uh, but the most important thing to note though is the era in which the Maku trees exist in. No, I'm not referring to the downfall timeline and the fact that the Oracle games are in that timeline, although that is very relevant. No. What I'm referring to is the time period. Tears of the Kingdom is set between the era of founding after the era of creation and some odd six years after the era of the wild. The Oracle games and the Maku trees or Deku trees in one word or another exist in the era of, get this, light and darkness. The era of light and darkness, folks, it can't hit the nose any harder than it already has, but um, the era of light and darkness is set after the imprisoning wars and within the downfall timeline, which is one of the more popular arguments for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom's timeline placement, although it is traditionally viewed as so far down the timeline that uh, it all converged into one, but regardless? The Oracle games and the downfall timeline's era of light and darkness is a revelation in itself because in the downfall era we have the Zelda title, A Link Between Worlds, in which Link travels directly between Hyrule and its alternative counterpart Lowrule, a place that looks and feels underground beneath Hyrule. You even enter Lowrule through cracks in the ground. Ah, but what's fascinating, however, is that Hyrule and Lowrule contain no Deku trees and or Maku trees during A Link Between Worlds time, but we know the Oracle games are set before A Link Between Worlds and when the hero's quest was completed, a restoration wish was made and the inverted Triforce of Lowrule was also restored. But don't let that wish distract you, thinkers. It had nothing to do with restoring the Maku trees due to being at the wrong time in history. Nay, the Triforce wish I want you to ponder is the wish made in A Link to the Past. This wish is theorized to have restored Hyrule across various timelines and is also theorized to have one of the largest impacts temporally across the Zelda timeline. What if this restoration wish inadvertently restored the Deku trees of old, but they were just referred to as Maku trees in that timeline? That tree stump on the map is mighty suspicious. Maybe that very wish is the reason Maku trees exist within the era of light and dark and the battle between light and dark is really just a cyclical and natural part of the order of nature in Hyrule's universe. Everything could be connected and as far as connections go, we do have a Triforce that is inherently tied to Hyrule and an inverted Triforce that is linked with Lowrule and those that dwell above are always connected and linked with those that dwell below. Also in Lowrule, there isn't a Master Sword for its alternative world counterpart to use. Just Master Ore for Link from Hyrule to utilize in upgrading his Master Sword. Meanwhile, in Tears of the Kingdom, there isn't a pedestal before the Dark Deku Tree or within it, nor a Dark and or Gloom Master Sword either. Instead, we have a corrupted Deku Tree, rotten to the core with its roots slowly overtaking the Great Deku Tree's light roots and Ganondorf feeding from this Gloom Tree's connection 
connections to the sacred power in the root networks. This slow corruption of the world below Hyrule is incredibly similar to a link between worlds plotline in which Lurul's inverted Triforce was destroyed and the world began to decay. People slowly changed to become more aggressive and neurotic. Some even transformed into monsters and the world of Lurul grew to resemble Hyrule's dark world. Doesn't that sound eerily like Tears of the Kingdom's gloom? A corruptive, soul-sucking parasitic force that could decay all elements of the world, both physical, mental, and spiritual. The gloom literally causes weapons to decay, and the Master Sword is officially regarded as the decayed Master Sword after being directly hit by Ganondorf's gloom magic, which coincidentally happens right before Ganondorf slips away to sleep and restore his body within the rotten core of the Dark Deku Tree, or Maku Tree. Additionally, Link can't just take the decayed Master Sword to the Deku Tree either. It was out and down for the count, meaning the pedestal couldn't utilize the Sacred Sealing Light because the Great Deku Tree was rendered inert and unable to siphon power from the Light Roots due to the temporary hold of the Gloom. Now, all of this is just theory, so take this video with a grain of salt and maybe also a hint of pepper in the comments too. Also, shout out to Hyrule Gamer because he found out mostly if not all Gloom Roots point back towards Ganondorf's castle where the Gloom Tree sits. That deep-rooted revelation piqued my curiosity, and if I hadn't investigated why, we'd never have a theoretical answer to that Zelda mystery. But it makes so much sense that the gloom roots point back to the castle where Ganondorf sleeps and the Dark Deku Tree just looms above him, siphoning off sacred power from the light roots and sapping the Great Deku Tree of its life essence. Great stuff, big brain stuff, makes complete sense. So again, big shout out to Hyrule Gamer, truly a fabulous Zelda theorist, and you should go check him out in his videos if you haven't already. Hit that like button, it always helps with the algorithm. Comment and share your thoughts down below. I love reading everybody's ideas and theories, and it's always the most exciting part, sharing and exploring. Also, join us on Discord. It's the heart or core of our community, as a tree theorist enthusiast might say. We've got chats full of lovely folks, regular hangouts with that thonk dude, yours truly. We've also got live streams on Twitch and behind the scenes access for people who want to support our theory content monetarily. Of course, it goes without saying, but any and all support is appreciated deeply, but never expected. So what are you waiting for? Branch out and join our Discord server. It's of course my sole mission to excite and incite a love for learning and passion to explore ideas in the various theory communities and Zelda, Pokemon, and Nintendo are some of the few things that I love the most. Anyway, it's been a pleasure and an honor as your host Thinkifer. Feel free to enjoy many a flavorsome trail of thought in the theory videos I have in the top right corner with a warm cup of thonk juice. I'm gonna relax now and go hang out with Elfie. Have a big brained, thonky day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.